Asia is a very huge region. It actually has more than half of the world's population. Um, of course, there is India and China, which are the biggest country in the world, but there are also many big countries in Asia, including small countries, and together uh, it makes up a variety and diversity of cultures and conditions. Many of our people are engaged in very intense struggles for life, for survival, uh, struggles that uh, involve livelihoods, health, struggles that involve uh, struggles against political repression and violence. But one common struggle that most of our peoples have is a struggle for access to water. Water is very basic to life. Uh, we, know, we all know that. It's not just because human beings need water in order to live at, in terms of drinking water, but water is also very central to growing our food. So access to water is indeed a very basic struggle that involves, I think, most of the people of the world and certainly uh, peoples from, from my region. Like many other countries in different parts of the world, the privatization and corporatization of water services is taking place rapidly, has been taking place rapidly in most Asian countries. And many of our member organizations are involved in various kinds of struggles against privatization. In the Philippines, for instance, where I am from, uh, the privatization that took place in Metro Manila, which is the capital of the country, was something that the World Bank uh, boasted about as the biggest privatization project that they got involved in, uh, not just in Asia, but in, in the world. The privatization of Metro Manila services took place uh, almost 15 years ago. And just five years later, uh, the World Bank stopped uh, 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 referring to the experience of privatization in Metro Manila as a showcase because after five years, the privatization was clearly uh, going against everything that the World Bank was uh, boasting about. Uh, for instance, instead of uh, leading to cheaper water rates for the people, because that's what they said it would lead to, uh, less than five years later, the water rates in Metro Manila were five to seven times more than privatization levels. Secondly, uh, the, one of the companies that took over, in which a French company, Suez, was involved, uh, was also a failure after five years and they had to go into receivership because uh, the business uh, design for the privatization process was a uh, total failure. And this was uh, an, on the advice of the World Bank under the expert guidance of the World Bank so that it really exposed uh, the World Bank privatization project as a failure. But it was not just a failure in terms of the bank's um, objectives. More, more than that, it was a failure in terms of people's rights and people's rights to water. Because um, instead of people having greater access to water, to safe and uh, health and clean uh, water, uh, what happened was a narrowing down of access, not just because of the increase of the rates, but because many areas were no longer being serviced uh, adequately because the water companies did not believe these were profitable areas to service. So there were a lot of areas where there were plans for expansion before privatization and the expansion stopped. So there were a lot of examples and reasons why the privatization in Metro Manila fared, failed. There are also other experiences in the Philippines about privatization which uh, I think is similar to African experiences with the form of uh, water service that is called prepaid water. I'm not sure if many people have heard about this, but this is a system where in order to be able to access piped in water, you have to use a card where you have to load credits so that you use the card in order to be able to access water. So there are obviously two major problems about this, and this is uh, unlike the system where you pay for the service afterwards, many people uh, could not afford to come up with the immediate cash for them to be able to, uh, to, to access the water service. So obviously this le led to even uh, 
margin, further mar marginalization of people from access to water. The other problem is this prepaid water service was actually um, about 10 times more expensive than the other uh, piped in water service. Um, people had to pay more than $4, uh, I don't know, in euros, maybe three euros for one uh, cubic meter of water. So this is very, very expensive even by world standards. There are other experience of uh, privatization of water in other Asian countries and this is not just about privatization of services but also privatization of water sources. There are huge river systems in Asia that cut, cut across several countries and our experience has been this river systems, parts of these river systems are being controlled by also by big uh, corporations um, that are building huge dams for hydroelectric power and one of the major projects that are taking place now is the Mekong River uh, power project where they're going to they are building a huge dam in order to provide electricity supposedly for people in among several countries that are bordering the Mekong River but in fact the electricity will not be going to people it will be going to the big corporations that are uh, investing in the area um, one ironic uh, project for instance is a uh, our power projects um, in Asia which are being built in countries but are not going to be servicing the people in those countries but servicing other people in other countries. So this is one example of them. Um, other uh, corporate takeover of water sources include uh, experiences in India where the big bottling corporations are taking over big lands and extracting or abstracting water from the lands in order to uh, not just uh, put them uh, produce bottled water but also to pr produce soft drinks no so for instance coca-cola is a big enemy in India because coca-cola uh, and even Pepsi has taken over lands in India and they have abstracted water from the lands and have left the lands dry because they need water in order to uh, produce the, the soft drinks or the the soda uh, that they produce for these companies. In these different struggles, what we are demanding is that water be uh, under the hands of people or under the control of people. There are many different forms of public and social control of water and water services, so we're not saying, uh, we're not promoting just one model. Uh, the important thing is that the, the, these are more democratic and more popular forms of uh, controlling and managing water services and water sources as compared to systems where big private corporations are in control. So in some cases, some of our movements are saying that the state must uh, regain control of the water, but that there should be reforms in how the state uh, manages water. It must be done in a more democratic and more transparent way, in a more efficient way, to address the problems of corruption that does exist, uh, to have alternative financing so that water services are not dependent on borrowed finance, for instance. Um, but their vision or their ideal is that there should be a public or state management and control of water services. Um, there are also groups who are uh, promoting and proposing uh, more decentralized and more community controlled uh, water services and community control and management of water sources. So there are different discussions as to how to make this democratic so that um, even communities who do not have water sources in their area um, have an equal uh, decision making and control over water sources in general so that uh, no one community is privileged more than the others or are more, you know, have more advantage than others. Um, there are different forms uh, of uh, control and management that are being discussed. For instance, building community cooperatives is one form. There's other forms where it's public or government, but it's more decentralized and there's uh, more direct and active 
participation of community groups and civil society groups in the actual management of water. But the forms of management and control, uh, what the possibilities for this and how democratic they can be, truly democratic they can be, we believe are also is also very much linked to the question of finance. No? Um, we believe that our country should be able to mobilize finance domestically uh, through people's mobilizations, through people's resources, in order to have uh, genuine control and sovereignty over our sources, water sources and our, and our services. But for us to be able to mobilize that finance that we need, we also need to address how our economies are structured. So from the particular question of water, we really do need to look at the, the economy, how our economies are structured. I mean, the less democratic our economies are, the more a few elites and uh, wealthy groups control the resources, uh, the less possible it is to have democratic service systems or water systems. So it's also very much tied up with um, economic uh, resources and the economic system itself. And as long as we're looking at that, we also need to realize that our country's economies are also very much linked to the global economic system so that uh, the question of water cannot also be separated from questioning how the whole global economic system works.